Hi, everybody. My name is Chelsea Wooding, and I am an associate faculty assistant professor at National University. And as you can see, I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about Nidifer's attentional model. So in sports psychology, we talk a lot about control the controllables, right? This idea that when we perform, there are things about our performance in our control, and there are things that are outside of our control. The list of things outside of our control could go on for days. Things like the weather, the performance venue, the opposing team, um, the officials, our coaches, our teammates even. The list of things we can control is a little bit more straightforward. Most specifically, it's us. We control us. And one of the things that we can control about ourselves is our attention and our focus. And so when we talk about ways to think about and build awareness to our attention and what we do once we have that awareness, Nidifer's attentional model is a really great place to start to build that understanding, build that awareness, and where we go from there. So when we think about Nidifer's approach to attention, he actually broke attention down into two different dimensions. First of all, there's the width of the attention. And second, there's the direction of our attention. So when we think about the width, there are two options. It's either broad or it's narrow. Broad is exactly what it sounds like. It's wide. There's a lot that we take in. Narrow is the exact opposite. Think about having blinders on. One or two things we select in, we come in, right? Zoning in. When we think about direction, we're going either internal or we're going external. Am I thinking about things inside of myself or am I thinking about things outside of myself? Now, what's really cool about these models, or excuse me, this model, is that we combine those two dimensions and create this really cool visual with quadrants. So on this vertical axis, we're going to chart width. And we'll put broad at the top and we'll put narrow down at the bottom. And then on the horizontal, we'll put external and we'll put internal. So we end up, as you can see, with these four quadrants where our attention can go. So let's start with broad external. When our attention is broad and external, we're looking outside of ourselves to get as much of a picture of what's happening around us as possible. And it's said that when we're in this quadrant, we're assessing. We're looking at what's happening. We're assessing the situation, right? We're trying to take it in, see everything that we can about what's outside of ourselves. We can also go broad internal, right? And at that moment, it's said that we're analyzing. We're analyzing what's happening in ourselves. We're looking at internally, but as, at, at as many things as possible in that moment. We could then shift to internal narrow. So remember, narrow is coming in. It's zoning in on one or two things, but staying internal. And at this point, it said that we're preparing. So an example might be focusing on just your breath. It might be focusing on your heart rate, focusing on your thoughts. It's zoning in on one or two things inside you. And then there's external narrow. And this is where it said that we act. Again, one or two things, but we're focusing back outside of ourselves. So an example I love, because I'm biased, football's my favorite sport. I think about a quarterback. So at any given point, a quarterback might be external broad. They might need to look at the entire field. What's the defense doing? What's my line doing? Where are my receivers going? Right? So I'm assessing the situation. He might then switch and analyze. How am I doing? As I'm walking up to the line before the play starts, how's my arm feel? How's my hand? How do my hands feel? Maybe I have an injury I need to check on. Am I feeling tight? Am I feeling loose? Then I might switch and go to internal narrow, right? So again, as he's coming up to the line right before he calls the play, again, maybe he takes that deep breath. (sighs) Height, right? And then at some point, it's very likely that he's going to switch to external narrow. He needs to zone in on that receiver. Or maybe he needs to feel the ball in his hands to make sure he gets it from the center and doesn't fumble it, right? So the important piece about this model, you might be thinking, well, what's best? Where do I need to be? And the amazing thing is that at any given point in time, there might be places for all of them. So instead of thinking one is right or one is wrong, it's more about where do I need to be in this moment? What's valuable for me right now? So instead of thinking I can only be at one or two, It's can I select and can I move through the different quadrants I need to be when I need to be there. 
So again, coming back to that idea of controlling the controllables, we can control where we are. And if we recognize, you know what, right now I'm broad external, but I need to switch to internal and narrow, then I can take the time, come back to my breath and be where I need to be. So hopefully this has given you a really good understanding of, of Nidifer's attentional model and how it can benefit us as mental performance consultants when talking to a performer or an athlete about their focus and the choices they have moving forward in controlling that focus. Thank you so much for watching and listening and I hope it was helpful.